Um, right, so I'll be presenting on looking at the vagina through labella on behalf of my co-authors, uh, Rob Comber, Gavin Wood, Dean Seraf, and Madeline, Madeline Bellum was my supervisor. Um, we are, we're based at Open Lab at Newcastle University in the UK. Um, oh, actually I can't read my notes. So this research uh, looks at a topic of taboo in health, or more specifically, uh, women's health. Um, and it includes uh, talking about women's sex organs, pelvic fitness, in relation to um, prevention of incontinence. Um, it introduces humor in the design of interactions as a method to help break down barriers to knowledge of the body. And it's also an alternative to quantified self-approaches. So I'm going to start the presentation by introducing the design of this system, um, Labella. And I'll give an overview of the study we've conducted and the following discussion. So what is Labella? Some of you might have seen it yesterday. We have an interactivity um, booth. So Labella is an augmented system that supports intimate bodily knowledge and pelvic fitness in women. Um, what it does, um, it's a combination, uh, it combines a pair of underwear for embodied intimate interaction and a mobile phone. So there's an app um, that is actually, it's a tool for embodied discovery. And the experience uh, bears this resemblance to looking at oneself through a mirror. And in the case of Labella, it is an interactive mirror. Um, the way it works, the underwear, you have two examples here. The underwear, um, it's got a surface printed visual marker, which is positioned in the middle of the crotch area. And um, the, the camera phone um, can recognize that marker. And once it does, it starts a series of on-screen interactions. And all these interactions, they intend to support self-discovery. Um, the motivation lies on exploring how uh, body-worn and digital interactions might support health and education in relation to intimate parts of the self, parts of the body that are usually neglected or not really uh, talked about in varied contexts, and also how the wearable and mobile technologies can support women's bodily experiences in relation to um, the reproductive sy system, um, continence care, and sexual pleasure by promoting literacy to enable self-care. Um, so we started by looking at continence care, and I'll use that as an example. So learning about and maintaining pelvic fitness is actually uh, critical to incontinence prevention and therefore it's critical to women's health across the life course at any um, age. Um, however, this is a topic, pelvic fitness, it's a topic in women's health that remains overlooked, uh, just as much as misconceptions about intimate bodies and body parts are all, uh, abound. And Labella, what it tries to do, um, it's providing a unique perspective on this matter. So it's trying to tackle this by looking at those misconceptions about the biological knowledge in relation to the external genitalia and reproductive system, um, medical and personal health relating pelvic fitness and pelvic ex exercises with um, continence care, and also um, bringing in positive health and well-being and mentioning uh, addressing sexual ple pleasure. Um, so we basically looked at this lack of bodily knowledge as somewhat quite intertwined with taboo. Um, there's embarrassment, there's stigma, there's shame. It's something that is really not talked about. When it's talked about, it brings um, up um, lots of laughter. From uh, We had this experience with a previous series of workshops that actually led to this um, particular work where all women participating uh, before they actually manage to say vagina or any other word closely related to vagina, there was some laughter involved. And we thought that um, using that as um, a, a method um, would be a good idea. So we ended up using everyday technologies um, as an approach to tackle this barrier uh, to knowledge. So combining something that, in principle, everyone um, wears on a daily basis, underwear, in a mobile phone that most of us also carry in our pockets and don't leave the house without it. Um, so the interactions are purposely humorous and we explore that in both the physicality of the interactions which kind of require the person to find 
some kind of position where they can actually use their phone as a mirror to get that in, the, the interactive um, aspect going. And also in the design, so what you'll see in the design of the interface, um, it's also using humor as a way of delivering um, different types of information. So this was basically a research study. Um, so talking about the unmentionable, unmentionable the, the vagina that's on the title. <laughs> So there were a total of 14 women that participated in the study. Uh, the age range was 25 to 63 years old. Um, and among those 14 women, there was a variety of backgrounds, and that included um, experts, uh, like uh, women's health physiotherapists, and also yoga and Pilates teachers, instructors. Um, also women who've experienced childbirth, and others whose area of expertise was not linked to anatomy per se or women's health more broadly, and um, some who've never delivered a baby. Um, so the study was, it was an individual experience, and each of these women uh, were given a materials kit that contained a bespoke piece of underwear designed only for them, um, together with simple instructions on how to proceed with the experiment and the mobile phone with the app on it. Um, they basically kept it for a few days um, to have time to play around with it, and after, after which I met with them for a follow-up conversation. Um, of course, um, the aim here was to get an understanding of what each individual woman uh, thought about it, um, what they knew, what they didn't know. Um, understand the varied experiences they had with Labella. Um, so at the time of experiencing on their own, women would have launched the app on the phone um, while already wearing the piece of underwear. So there was something that was suggested in the instructional material. And look down there, not sure it's very visible on the screen, but what you see on the screen right now, it's the very first screen on the app. So when they launched the app, they would see that mirror shape that kind of suggests to look down there. Um, and, and this was something that some of them immediately um, associated. They made this connection with this um, earlier awkward formal learning experiences in school they had um, when they've had the nurse coming into class and telling them to use a mirror to look at themselves. Um, so I'll show you what they would have seen on the screen at the time of doing the experience with the app. Um, after the trial and error of finding the right position to actually successfully advance to this other, the second screen that then um, would give all this um, interactive information and invites to um, touch and experiment on the screen. Um, kind of pushing this barrier of weirdness, of looking at oneself, the weirdness of the interface. So this is taken from the app. So this is the first sequence. It's a sequence that invites the woman to touch. So what you see is a female perineum, which is the image that the camera phone captures once um, it, it recognizes the marker on the underwear that is being worn. Um, and there's different um, bits in there that um, the woman can press, and there's two different types of information that will come up. Um, the one, the yellowish one, um, is actually a medical biological terminology, and the, the, the gray one um, is basically colloquialisms that I took from these previous workshops I've had. Um, I'm using expressions that women on those workshops use to actually describe um, their body parts. Uh, so what happened at, at this time um, from, uh, from uh, my conversations with all of them is that some, some actually acknowledge knowing all of these body parts and others um, not so much. There was, some, um, there was some, for example, they didn't know um, the vulva was not familiar to some of them. The external location of the clitoris wasn't familiar to all of them. Uh, urethra is a good example. A lot of um, participants, or a lot of people actually don't know. They, they only know the colloquial um, 
term, um, which uh, when it's shown here, it, it, it's P or we hole. So that's how most women, most people actually know um, about the urethra opening. Um, and, and of course, the experts who participate in the study consider this the basics, and, and some or the majority of uh, the women have the memory of learning this anatomy in school, though um, it's something that it's not covered um, as much as it's covered by the app, for example, and they also mentioned that it's covered briefly and not with so much detail. So. Clearly, there's some bits in there that are actually omitted from the sex education curriculum in school. Um, so this is a second, a, a second sequence, which um, actually uh, it's an approach to talking about pelvic floor muscles and pelvic structure. So once knowing the external genitalia, understanding where things are on the body, um, we kind of go one layer inside the body to explain how all these external bits actually get uh, to stay in place and function normally as we would like them to function. Um, so again, in relation to continence care, uh, uh, which was something that we wanted to explore, because um, even the word um, incontinence or the term incontinence is not really well known to everyone unless um, the experienced it and had to um, take care of it. So what you saw there was a, a, um, an attempt to actually try and visualize what the pelvic floor in women look like and what the pelvic floor muscle exercise, which is basically a contraction and a, relax a relaxation of that said pelvic floor, um, how it works, how it feels, and how 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 to understand it visually, because it's something very difficult uh, to explain. Even medics, when they explain it, they show these cross sections that actually don't have the muscle structure on them. They have all the other organs, and people have to imagine what's going on. And as they imagine what it's going on, they probably try to do it with their body at the same time, which is something that happened with this um, experience, because um, at some point, actually, uh, some of the participants weren't sure where to touch, whether on the screen, on the body, so it created that kind of, it was very ambiguous, which, which, which is, was the intention, actually, um, because, of course, we invite um, women to touch on the screen. It doesn't mean that they should not touch on their bodies and uh, see if the technique that we suggest, which, which are the, the the medical, the, the accepted techniques to find the pelvic floor, see if they can find it or not on their own body, and see if they feel, as it's suggested there, the tightening sensation around their bodies. So this animated uh, visualization, it gave women something that they had, and I quote, never been able to visualize, and now giving them something to imagine when actually doing pelvic floor exercises. This, was, this is the final sequence, which actually invites, um, works like a personal trainer. It invites the person to work, work out together, um, do it at the same time. It's giving ideas on where to do these pelvic floor muscle exercises because, of course, and hopefully at this stage, uh, women would have already understand where the pelvic floor is and how to identify it and how to exercise it. So now it's about maintenance. After, after, after being knowledgeable about the body, now how to maintain that body in shape. Um, so simple suggestions, uh, just like a timing, um, a timer thing just for fun. And then at some point, um, it will ask for a, a photo, to take a photograph, because again, this is part of the research study. We were trying to get as much information as possible. Um, and, um, oh, I skipped something. So, so at this point, um, women actually understanding that um, this is a workout that can be done anywhere, anytime, while driving, brushing their teeth um, in the office, was something that they found um, quite powerful. Um, it's very empowering <laughs> because there's a sense of self-care in any situation, anytime. No one really can see it. Um, 
And I'll, I'll quote one. One of them said, we could do this, but people should not understand that you're doing this. It's actually kind of powerful. And this is what, after she had the experience with Labella, she got back to me saying that um, she actually done the exercise in the office. And how cool was that? Because no one, no one knew what she was doing, and she thought that was um, empowering for her. So, so at this stage, yes, the system asks for a photo, which again is a way to reiterate this intangible quality of the exercise to be invisible. Um, was something that might have been misunderstood by some of the women, because they, they thought that we were asking for a vagina selfie, whereas that was not really the idea, because of course the idea was that at this point you understand that no matter uh, what photo you send back to me, it can be the ceiling, it can be uh, uh, your workout body, uh, facial expression, it can be any body part. Um, hopefully I won't be able to see that you're actually doing that pelvic floor muscle exercise. Um, so if you're able to know, if you know uh, when, uh, how to do your kegels, if you're doing it right, I shouldn't be able to see it. No one should be able to see it. So just to kind of reinforce that idea. And then, of course, living with the message keeps squeezing. Now, now that you know how to do it, you know you can do it anytime. Just continue doing it. You don't need any app to keep reminding you uh, when and where to continue with it. So, yes, so um, looking is awkward. The entire ex experience is based on this awkwardness of actually looking at our own bodies and uh, looking at parts that we don't necessarily look uh, much unless we have some concerns with it. So we really do neglect it a little bit. And um, so Labella, it is asking these participants, or it asks part participants to, lo to look at their own body in this very unusual way. And looking can be awkward, as our data suggested. Uh, through these accounts, through these conversations I had with, the, um, with women afterwards. Um, so a few things um, came out of it. Um, the first one, it seems to be very clear that making oneself comfortable, it's the very first um, step to engage in le learning. Oh, okay, almost done. Um, to engage in learning about this body space and using humor as a coping mechanism to manage the strangeness uh, that are having to handle the mobile phone close to the worn underwear and wearing a piece of underwear that is funny but bizarre. Um, having an interaction that starts by asking her to look at her body in such a strange way helps break the first barrier of taboo while offering a fun way to examine oneself. Um, some noted that this was a sense of fun and strangeness that in the first in instance motivated the picking, and now that they've done it once, they would probably continue, continue to do it. Um, also, women's accounts of the body as being weird or funny seem to strengthen this notion that humorous interactions within the body can be advantage to, co to encourage conversations and breaking taboos, and that designing with humor can help break, break social awkwardness and support awkward learning. Um, so basically, while looking away might contribute to prevent discomfort, looking back with Labella, it did encourage accepting awkward as inevitable which is something that enables the construction of self-knowledge. So just in conclusion, um, as of now, uh, Labella contributed to making an impression, and it was a memorable learning experience for women who participated in the study. And while we, th while we, we see technologies for intimate health and wellness um, that remind and motivate action to fitness, those set technologies and novel ones, they have the potential to further include embodied interactions to contribute being for the person to be uh, comfortable with her, herself or with oneself and enable support and support body literacy with the ultimate aim of empowering well-being through enhanced self-knowledge. So accepting awkward as inevitable can lead to funny and strange experiences that help to ease the burden of taboo. Um, I'll be expanding a little bit more on this uh, later in a session later <laughs> in the afternoon if you're interested. Thank you, I'm so over time. <laughs> So 
Can I? Okay. Yeah. Do you need my? Uh... Can I ask yeah. a question? Hi, I have a question for you. Hi. Um, Lane Hubbard, University of Colorado. So I really appreciate the emphasis on intentional inspection and intimate self-knowledge. I'm just wondering, what was the experience, the um, visual experience, both in seeing and reading the data for women, especially who had large breasts, large bellies, when holding it in between the legs? Yeah, so there was actually a concern with the, some of the women who participated. Um, um, they did mention, so some of them who had more body mass found it a bit difficult to uh -huh. actually move the phone. Uh, others, for example, have glasses. Mm -hmm. uh, there was one wh who wears glasses that said like, oh, actually I couldn't do it that well because when I, when I look down, my glasses, glasses just fall off my face. So of course there's, um, there's some concerns there in terms of the design. It's, it's, it's quite easy for some women uh, to uh, use the phone together with the underwear and for some others, whether because they had glasses on, whether because their body was shaped differently in some way, they, they, they found it more difficult, yes. Are you able to have feed, while holding the phone in a typical manner, are you able to have feedback with the um, underwear device while touching and getting that, uh, that actual feedback without having to have the phone um, see the underwear? Uh, you mean real-time feedback? Right, Sorry. while holding the phone in a typical manner? Is so that something you, you that's use possible? use the phone with the underwear to actually start the interactions uh -huh. on, the f on the screen. Once you, once you start that, you don't really have to hold it in place. You can, you can hold it anywhere until it asks you again to take it back. Uh, is, is that your question? Kind of, yeah, thank yeah, you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Sorry. 